who coordinates all this? So uh, if you go back to that general, you know, the architecture of the Indian system, uh, you have to go back in history as well. <laughs> um, India has tre treaty agreements uh, from before independence with the Indian princes. Okay, this has nothing to do with foreign policy. Uh, and these were controlled by the viceroy's political office. So imagine, you know, the 300, 400 or 500 Indian princely states, um, they were treated like foreign entities. And there would be treaties between the government of India and Patiala or whatever. Um, and these would be individually negotiated. So there was no consistency across the system. Yeah, there, there was obviously some, some consistency because all of those treaties resulted in British dominance, British control of foreign policy and, and certain other areas, but it wasn't that consistent. Then there were a similar set of treaties with dependent neighboring states, because under the, under the British, the Viceroy of India was in charge of Indian foreign policy, and that included Central Asia, the Gulf, and East Asia. Uh, and in fact, Indian revenues supported uh, diplomatic presences in those countries as well. So you have another set of treaties with Afghanistan, Iran, the Gulf states, etc., which were also negotiated by the Viceroy or the Viceroy's political office. Uh, and were often uh, very uh, specific to the, to the situation at the time. Then you wind the clock forward to independence and internal reform. So on the internal side, all the princely states were either subsumed within India or Pakistan. So they disappeared as a treaty uh, relationship. I, I'm not sure what the situation is in Pakistan, but I, I would imagine it's similar. Um, and then through the 50s and the 60s, as the neighbors became independent, that relationship also changed. And India, India's focus of atten uh, attention at the time was on bilateral relations with other countries, independent countries around the world. And you have to remember until the 60s or the 70s, uh, many countries had not yet achieved full independence. So it was, it was a transitional period. Uh, but nevertheless, there'd be an Indian embassy in Germany, in France, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, much of their emphasis, and this is part of Nehru's policy perspective, was on international institutions, on the UN and, and, uh, and so on. And the driving, um, ethos, philosophy, was of course non-alignment and the five Panchchil principles. So this was less about relationships than about principles which would be applied. Yeah. And that's also important because uh, India's engagement with many countries was at that time determined by compatibility with these principles. And one of them of course being non-interference in the sovereign affairs of member states which for countries, newly independent countries like India was very important, but which was the exact opposite of what the big colonial powers were doing to you know, their former colonies. So the British in their colonies, Malaya, and the French in their colonies, uh, and the Americans in South America, where they were uh, happy to exert enormous influence uh, and, and dominate the the region. So it, that structure, the political office, then became the foreign office. Okay. And so they inherited this odd mix of approaches. And I think that's why you'll find it difficult to identify clearly <laughs> how this system works. Because under the viceroy's arrangement, under the pre independence arrangement, foreign policy was reserved. To the viceroy. He was a reserved subject of the viceroy. So he didn't have to consult anyone. Foreign and defense policy was reserved to the 
uh, viceroy's authority. So no consultation was necessary, nor with the princely states, neither with the princely states, neither with the provinces, nothing. Uh, even to the extent that uh, I think the first or second Afghan war uh, was actually decided not in London, but, but, but in Delhi. The Viceroy decided one day that it'd be nice to have a juicy war, so off, off we went. Uh, so you got uh, other anomalies, because after all, India was a colony, but had its own foreign policy. This too is really strange. It's very anomalous. So the, the political office, which became, became the, for, the external affairs ministry, had people who were schooled in that particular way of doing things. 